Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. If you are looking for a podcast about instructional strategies enhanced by technology, you came to the right place. In our conversations, we will talk with tech experts, share ideas and strategies to help you build your toolbox with tools that you can use in your class immediately. Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast, where we explore the latest trends and innovations in education. Today, we have a very special guest joining us to talk about how students can get creative with Google tools such as Google Slides, Google Drawings, Docs, and more. Welcome to Tony Vincent, a highly respected educator, speaker, and ed tech expert known for his passion for empowering teachers with innovative digital tools. As the founder of LearningInHand.com and Shapegrams, Tony provides valuable resources, tips, and strategies for integrating technology effectively in the classroom. And with years of experience in the field of education, Tony Vincent is a sought after presenter at conferences worldwide, inspiring educators to enhance their teaching practices through technology. So get ready to be inspired by Tony's insights and expertise on our podcast today. Welcome, Tony. Ah, thanks. It's great to be here. Did I miss anything? Oh, no, that that pretty much covers it. I mean, the the big thing in my life is that I have twins who are fifth graders right now. So they're they're 11 year olds. And yeah, fifth grade is the grade that that I taught the most years in. So it's kind of fun that my own kids are are that age and experiencing a lot of the things that I recently have done done with fifth graders. Nice. Well, you'll be full of information for our listeners. And um, just before I forget, I'm Pam Hubler. And I'm Eileen Fernandez Parker. Okay, and let's go ahead and get started. So um, the first thing we wanted to know is we really just wanted to find out about your journey into the field of education and how you started that learning in hand, Shapegrams. How'd you get started into all that? Yeah, well, like a lot of teachers, I I decided to become a teacher when I was a student. I I clearly remember in sixth grade, like helping others, other uh, students learn math. And I'm like, I want to be a teacher. So after that, I studied every teacher I had. It didn't matter if they were good or bad. I always learned, you know, what to do or what not to do. That when I vowed when I was in charge of a classroom, like I would take all these mental notes and and be the kind of teacher that that little Tony Vincent would have wanted as a kid. And uh, so I uh, fresh out of college, got uh, a teaching job teaching fifth grade and. Uh, it was at a school that uh, was very technology forward. And then I had already, uh, I loved using technology. I like maxed out my credit card to buy a MacBook because back in the late nineties, it was very expensive to buy a laptop, yeah. but I knew it was going to help me teach. The school didn't provide laptops or any kind of technology. We had a couple like computers at the back of the room. Uh, but I, I, the web was kind of new then. <laughs> which is weird to think about, but mm-hmm. I had a website that, that I figured out how to code in HTML and we, my students and I named it planet fifth, where we put like announcements for parents and things on there. And, uh, my newsletter would go there and then I started posting student work and that's what really, uh, got me so excited about technology is that students could create things and other people could see them and those people didn't have to be in our classroom. They could be in other places and to see the, how serious they took their work, seeing that, oh, it's on planet fifth. It's like our classroom turned into like a, a publishing agency where our job was like, we're learning things. So then we're going to take what we learn and turn it into something so we can teach others. Uh, Eventually, a few years later, the, the district uh, tried a pilot project where I got a Palm Pilot for every awesome. student and a keyboard so that they could really wow. do some writing. Uh, we had a daily blog called The Daily Planet that uh, every day one of the students had extra homework. They had to write about what we did that day. And it was my whole writing curriculum ended up being circled around, uh, centered around this Daily Planet. And we just learned so much about writing by telling about what happened that day. And we did things like make a choose your own adventure stories. And um, eventually students made their own little portfolio web pages. And it was just, it was neat to see what students could do when they were empowered with the technology. And I, I kept that going through my work as being a tech coach and um, a self-employed consultant. And now a substitute teacher. I do that a, a couple times a month. 
uh, I still, when, when kids can create, I think they're the happiest. And because that's me, when little Tony Vincent, when I got to make something, that's, that's when I was happiest. I love that. And that's mm -hmm. one of those things, like, I wish I had a class like that. Man, yeah. that would have been amazing. Yeah. Because right. <laughs> I was the one that got in trouble for doodling on my notebooks and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, who knew? But <laughs> so how did you start getting into um, getting the kids to create? Did you start using Google tools or um, like, how did you use those tools? Yeah, well, well, back when I first started teaching fifth fifth grade, there was Google wasn't even around. Right. <laughs> but but then um, after about a dozen years uh, away from from school, I went back when my kids started kindergarten to teach fifth grade, and and at the school and in this district, they all have Chromebooks. So that was you know, they got Chromebooks. Yeah, I, I, I'm all about using whatever you have to mm -hmm. to create. So since that's what they had, I I dove in. I was more of an iPad kind of guy before that. But then since my kids didn't have iPads in the classroom, uh, my fifth graders and I, we, we dove into using Chromebooks and they became such creative communicators um, because they had such an interest in, in uh, really the way I got started was just little by little showing them, oh, here's a little bit that you can do in Google Slides. Now make a slideshow about the American Revolution in a single slide. And then eventually, here's how you had hyper hyperlinks. Here's how you make an index. Oh, now you know all this. You could make a whole ebook about another topic, like if we're talking about the water cycle. And so these little projects kind of built upon each other. That um, you know, and I had I think I had a group of pretty nerdy fifth graders <laughs> because if we, in I, I I live in Iowa and we had a, a pretty rainy. Uh, season that year where we had so much indoor recess the playground was flooded and uh i do you know what they did during recess mm -hmm. they had a collaborative slideshow with the class and they all just like drew things and made things on slides because that's what they wanted to do in their spare time that's what they enjoyed doing <laughs> That's awesome. It's better than just playing games and playing games and playing games mm -hmm. when they're inside. Um, so could you share some of the like the most effective ways that teachers like if you had to give them advice as to how to use Google Drawings, Google Slides and Google Docs, especially because those we are also one to one um, kindergarten and up. So we're trying to give teachers ideas of what they can do um, within those drawings slides and docs because they use them all the time just not necessarily in a creative way so what, what kinds of creative ways do, would you encourage teachers to use them yeah and I, and I really think you know I, I don't use google docs nearly mm -hmm. as much as the others because you know you try to plop an image on a page and you start typing yes. and it moves around and and uh -huh. it, it's no that's not fun <laughs> so right. so almost all even as a teacher my uh, so many of my assignments were in uh, Google Slides, sometimes docs that they're going to do writing because then it can expand to, to right. hold all the writing. But if they're doing little snippets or bringing in images, slides is really the way to go. And and I used to be, you know, Google Drawings and Slides are, they're, they're pretty much the same thing. There's very minor differences, but slides, you can have multiple slides. Um, so, I, so I tend to say slides, but you could do a lot of this in, in drawings as well. Uh, but like like I said, getting started, having students just make a single slide, but realize like, one of the first things to show them is word art. Go to the insert menu in word art and they can stylize the text and we talk about fonts and and we, we talk about text features and we notice text features in other places because we're applying it to our own work. And what kind of tone and mood does a font convey and what colors make it readable and how does color affect the reader? that is that's looking at your slides and they apply all that, then they know that they're different readers themselves because they're looking at those, those same features that they've created themselves. Um, so that's a way to get started. And then I, I wanted to, I wanted my students to get really good at slides. And, and I, for me, I always have loved art. So I, when I was teaching in, uh, 20, 2018, 2019, I offered a little a drawing challenge for each of my students where uh, 
in in the Google drawings, there was a picture that I had created. I started with this very simple house that was just like this red square and a brown triangle for the roof and then some rectangles for for windows and a door. But in the process of recreating that, they were learning about layers and how to move things around. And then if they drew their own house, well, then they could change the colors and they could customize it to the way they wanted it. And uh, they they wanted more. And luckily, then every week I made a new picture. Uh, it was like their morning work on on Wednesdays. So oftentimes on Tuesday nights, I was up late trying to <laughs> draw something that they could then recreate. But each week it got a little harder and harder. But by the middle of the school year, they could really draw with the shapes that are inside of Google Drawings and Google Slides, um, anything they could imagine. But that also meant that they could then draw diagrams and flow charts and style and make them look good but also just functionality they 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 had those skills right at their fingertips to um to make their learning visible so it was that. one, one of the that, neat, yeah that where shape grams came from <laughs> that's yeah so we i called them shape grams and then after i so i went back to consulting after that year in fifth grade but uh I thought this this is too good to just keep for my fifth graders, but I didn't have videos and things to go with them. So I turned it into a, a whole curriculum for teachers where there are 66 lessons and um, and 40 some other kinds of challenges there that teachers just give students a copy and they can uh, get started. I teach them. <laughs> There's a video in each one of these that that I teach how to do it. And then I, I don't teach at all. I leave some things a little open-ended. So there's some problem solving students need to do as they draw. And then after they've recreated the picture, they're encouraged to uh, make it their own and put their own own spin on it. Because that's that's the, the real beauty of when you create your own art, you, you get to make some decisions about it. I love how you have it laid out. Um, I, I was showing Eileen earlier how you've got the Google drawing. And then you've got the video off to the side because I think we kind of forget that you have all that space within Google Drawings that it's not on the canvas, it's off to the side. So you can have a little tutorial off to the side in directions. I mean, you could do that for math. You could do that for so many different things where you have a video and then they have the workspace, which is within Google Drawings. So I do love your layout for um, your shape grams. Yeah, thanks. I, I, I've found that as a teacher, I package so many of my lessons inside of Google Slides or Google Drawings, utilizing that extra space on the side to give students extra tips, um, reminders, hyperlinks. Their main work could be on the center stage. The, the, the canvas is more theirs to work with, but the sides was like me, <laughs> Mr. Vincent, giving you some, some, some teaching on the, on the left and right sides of the document. Mm -hmm. I'll have to put some pictures, uh, screenshots in the show notes, just so if anyone's looking at it, that they can see what I'm talking about as far as the layout. Um, and I think we have the the link to Shape Grams too. There are some free ones on there, and then there are some that if you want all of them, there is a, a paid, but it's a minimal subscription that you've got for the year, right? Yeah, I'm I'm a bad business person. It's uh, <laughs> thirty five dollars for for a year to, and you get to use all of them. And it's taken me years to build this library, so you're getting a lot of you're getting a, a, a lot, I think, a, a lot for that. But even just do the free ones, and and if it, it just doing those, mm -hmm. students will gain a lot of skills. These technology skills of you know, just keyboard shortcuts and stuff. I introduce as we go through. Definitely the the digital art and digital drawing skills. But then something that uh, that became apparent to me right away doing that house when I first tried it is that students need some words of perseverance because they don't get it right away and it's harder than they expect and they don't know how to deal with that. So <laughs> I've infused a growth mindset message into each of these lessons because uh, yes. without it, students might end up giving up. And I don't want them to do that. I want them to have some success, yes. but I don't want it to be so easy that it didn't matter that they did it. It, it, it There's some struggle involved. Right, yeah, that's good. That's healthy, mm -hmm. I like that. All right, and I know one of the things you were talking about um, in Google um, Slides, um, using like a, almost like more like a portfolio or where you could do a book. That's one of the things I think a lot of the times teachers forget that they can change the layout. So you could actually do that eight and a half by 11 and then you actually have a book. I mean, you could really do so much in Google Slides. Yeah, Is when you go into, oh, for sure. Yeah. When you go into page setup and change right. it to 
eight and a half by 11, or I actually prefer 11 by eight and a half because then as students are working on their Chromebooks, they get more of a full screen and they don't oh. have to zoom in as much, but oh, right. either way, um, that way, if you do print it, it, it is the, the size of a piece of paper mm -hmm. and Google Slides is great for publishing. You don't have to learn like InDesign or Microsoft Publisher or something fancy. Like you can add text boxes, you can add shapes, you can add images, you can crop images. You can do so much in there that you, you and your students have the tools you need to lay out any kind of poster or printable newsletter. Uh, I, I have a whole presentation I do about just the things you can print from Google Slides that you could make. You, you know, of course, the traditional like flyers and then there are templates for bro trifold brochures that you can uh, figure out in there. Um, one of the favorites is actually using Google Slides to make printable sticky notes. So students and teachers can put like bitmojis or pictures and, um, and uh, students can make a little sticky note to illustrate one vocabulary word uh, and every student maybe has a different word and they can put them on the door or, or somewhere. Uh, but th the way with the sticky notes works is there is, I have a template that then you put six notes on a page and send it through your printer. Um, I always say I'm not responsible for any printing jams that, that happen. My <laughs> printer is never jammed from this, but if yours does, it's not my fault. <laughs> but I but did teacher, that one with you. Uh -huh. just, um, for, at FETC, I saw you do that one. That was a great, a great presentation. Mm -hmm. I got lots of cool ideas. I'll share. Oh, there are so many the ideas for, for colorful printing, printed sticky notes. And, and it's been just a, a, a different way for students to convey what they know than just to to fill in the blanks, right? When you when you make something, you get that you get that satisfaction. And it sticks with you better when you're when you're creating something rather than just filling in blanks. Yes. Um, yeah, so true. Pun intended, and, right? I know you're you're the dad joke guy. So <laughs> yes. I was waiting for one. <laughs> and I one of the other uh, like principal ideas is a zine uh, where Art teachers and, and and English teachers have maybe made these for years. Where you fold a, piece, a single piece of paper the right way and cut it the right way, and it makes this eight-page booklet. Yeah. So I have a template, and that's one of the great things about Google Slides is you can give students a starting point, a template, and then they finish it. So I have a, a template that it has the, the pages labeled because some of them are upside down and, and how to fold it. But then students can use all those tools in Google Slides, the word art, the text boxes, bring in images, draw their own if they know how, and create a little mini book, a little zine about a topic they care about or that they're learning. And it's so fun to print them out and fold them. And you have this little book that you made. Right. You get, again, you get the satisfaction of making something that you can hand to somebody else and they can they can read it right there on the paper. I have your example. It's literally sitting on my desk right now because I have it off to the side for when I'm going to do a training on that, just how, how they can actually do that. So, yes, I will be passing along your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. T take that training with Pam because it's 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 fun. It's fun. Yeah. Hey, the first time you fold it, uh, it it's a little tricky. Yes. Uh, you need to remember you need to fold it before you cut it. Some people just start cutting and then that ruins it. But <laughs> That's there are I directions. I have a YouTube video mm -hmm. <laughs> that shows exactly how to how to fold and then cut. That's awesome. Nice. I can't wait to share. I know. I'm stuff. excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Anything else as far as like drawings or slides that you yes. have and you like yes. yeah, must must do? <laughs> what else what else can you the, share? The, the must do one. This 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 is my favorite. And that is digital stop motion, where mm -hmm. in Google Slides, you think of each slide as a frame. And you know, in stop motion, you in, in an animation, you have a frame and then you make a little change on the next frame and something's moved, then make another change. And when played in a row, you have some movement. So with, with this in mind, you can do this in Google Slides, where uh, each slide is a little bit something different and you then play it on a loop that that uh, you know, every second the picture changes so you can make things move. Students can demonstrate or they can make vocabulary words come alive. And th this is really handy where if they do have some of these shapegram skills where they can draw their own pictures, you, you 
I even have a shape gram where they draw themselves, but they're poseable. So we use certain shapes that it's easy to move hands and arms. So they can be demonstrating, they can move their hand and say, oh, well, this is how you uh, multiply on uh, fractions and, and show funny. off those things. And then um, make, the, make the fractions actually move or have each step show up, you know, step by step. Uh, to make these these animations that then can be shared as as a link, you know, it's a little complicated, but I there's actually I have a whole shape gram about digital motion, digital mm -hmm. stop motion. But they go in and they can publish it to the web so that every so when somebody clicks it, it opens up and automatically starts playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um, Cynthia Cheshire did that okay. at Carolyn Carolyn Lewis School. Her kids are fifth grade. And they did uh, photosynthesis using the stop motion. And what was so interesting was how the kids who maybe are not strong in the subject area were so strong in the technology area that it made them, it was almost like a coming together around that child when a lot of times those kids are not the ones they got who, to shine. Yes, they got to shine. Yes. Thank you. You know, and um, but it was it was very exciting, and the kids wanted to do it again. Like they were like, "What can we do next time?" You know. <laughs> yeah. Recently, <laughs> I, recently, I, I I subbed in my twins' fifth grade classroom, and they're both in the same class this year, and and I wanted to introduce them to stop motion. So they did, they were studying the layers of the earth. And it was just neat to see, like, I, I didn't give them, an, I actually gave them a starting point of an earth and I didn't tell them, but I had uh, cropped it so that there were two sides to it. So they got this and it's just a picture of the earth. But then I showed them how to move the, move the pieces of the earth away from each other. And then underneath were actually circles that had the layers that they were then able to add their own labels to. It was a neat starting point, but then just to see how they then some made the labels you know, fly in and then wiggle a little bit as they were telling you what what that layer was called. And like, just like your experience, the kids like, when can we do this again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So and I bet learning. they'll remember photosynthesis yeah. better than a lot of other things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you make something, of course, you're, you're going to remember it better, but particularly animations and videos, I think, have are particularly sticky because you are watching this thing over and over again, and then you're like, you can't help but show your friends. And it was <laughs> I, when I was subbing that day and they all wanted to show me their products. It's like, there's only one of me. I can't watch all of these. So I said, share it with me and I'll look at it tonight <laughs> because mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they just get to expose to that, that content again and again and again that, that they've put into the animation. That poor teacher. I'd, I'd hate for you to be the sub. I know like, you have to follow okay. up after Tony. Oh, no, she <laughs> is. She is the the best teacher I've ever seen in my life, and my oh, kids awesome. are so excited. I I actually taught across the hall from her that year. I taught fifth grade at the school and learned so much from her. She is she wow. is the best. That's great. Nice. <laughs> All right. Anything else? That's just. I I think that, that I, I could, day, yeah, sure. I know I, 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 and I have gone all day with, <laughs> with different ways to use these tools, but I think just the, the main thing is break out of the mold and think the Google slides, it doesn't have to be for slides. You can make printable things. You can use animations and different kinds of creations. Um, it doesn't have to be the same thing every time. Right. That's true. Um, and I know we have some resources in the show notes. Um, we're talking about how, like, you can how you stay updated um, yeah. with the latest ed tech trends and things like that. And then, how do you pick the ones that are worth implementing in your classroom, not just clicking on the new shiny things? Um, what suggestions do you have? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm I've always been attracted to new shiny things, yeah. <laughs> but, but the more I've been into ed tech, I prefer things like what we've just talked about. Google Slides is not new and shiny at all, but you know right. what? You can make it <laughs> novel and interesting by what you do inside of it. So I've, I, I, I'm not always looking, I'm more on the lookout for more uses than I am for tech tools. And particularly because then a new tool comes along, is, is it going to be blocked in the district? Is it going to be approved? Like there's a lot there. So if we work within what we already have, I think that that's so much, so much better. 
Um, but for me to, to stay up to date, I, I, Twitter is, is one thing. Um, I go to a lot of conferences when I speak there and any chance I get, I try to sit in on sessions and, and learn there. Uh, TikTok is actually a place where there's a lot of, there's a lot of teacher things on TikTok and a lot of ed tech there. And, uh, and then really subbing because I, when I'm, I'm, I'm probably an annoying sub because I ask for lesson plans ahead of time so that the night before I can figure out, okay, what, what's something new and different I want to do with, with this. And, uh, I, I, I connected with something. I always, I'm always learning and I, I and maybe experimenting a little bit when I sub because it gives us a, a chance to have some fun. And, and then really lately though, uh, there are newsletters seem to be the place where I'm getting a lot of, a lot of information, email newsletters. And, um, so there, there's, there's three of them. I gave you guys links to them, but, uh, Eric Kurtz has control alt achieve mm -hmm. that comes out like once a week, the ditch that textbook newsletter comes out every day. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard to keep up there so much. And then about, I think every month, uh, the tech tips for one, one newsletter from Jen Hall comes out yeah. too. And she, mm -hmm. she presents it in Canva real nicely. Yeah. And I wish I could say I had my own newsletter. I've, it's been on my to-do list and I need to do it at some time, uh, sometime, but I, I don't have a, a learning in hand or a Tony Vincent newsletter at the moment, but I sure do learn a lot from other people's newsletters. Yeah. Well, you have so many great resources too. So, um, so that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Control all the, Eric, uh, Eric Kurtz, I've met him. Actually, I've met all of them at yeah. conferences. Um, yeah, yeah, and Matt Miller, too. we saw him. I yeah. two of them with you. Yes. And then Jen Hall, I've known for a very long time, actually went to middle school with her. <laughs> you did? Yes, which is so weird because we were both in Florida. But anyway, um, we didn't that, know each other. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, she, crazy. She she does these drives across the country, and she was in Council Bluffs one time. And I'm like, I saw on Facebook, I'm like, well, you should stop. I live right here. So she... <laughs> She's actually That's been awesome. here. It's kind of funny. That's awesome. Well, shout out to Jen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. And then like you have tons of resources already created for teachers. Um, can you tell us a little bit more like as far as where they can get your resources? Um, any of those things? We've got them linked too. So. Yeah. And if I had more time, I would make a central hub. Like I would spend all my time on my website, but uh, I I don't. <laughs> so things are scattered in in different places but if there's anything any any of your listeners have been like oh i want to see that email me that i i answer every email that i receive and you can wow. find find that at learninginhand.com there's a there's a contact button and then all my social medias are there too i i put i try to post something about every day on twitter mm -hmm. uh, a new idea a new tool an article something to think about and then I, I kind of slowed down my pace, but on Instagram, uh, if you go to the, uh, the usernames learning in hand, uh, there are these little square graphics that try to communicate a, a tool, a tip, or an idea. So they're very glanceable. And uh, that's kind of a, a good place to, to start. And then at learninginhand.com, if you're interested in Google Drawings, you, know, you do a search on the site and you know, I, maybe something will come up, uh, probably pages from a workshop that I've given or something, but uh, you can find things there too. Awesome. Nice. Well, I, I'm so glad you check all your emails because you were actually able to respond to me. Yes. So come on our podcast. Yeah, <laughs> as long as you're doing yeah. my spam, I'm doing good. But I actually do check my spam folder and it's like the most, it's the worst part of my day, but every once in a while something goes in there and I don't want somebody to think I'm ignoring them. So I go through mountains wow. of paper. Well, we appreciate wow. it. Yes. Um, so, but thank you so much for joining us and giving us all these ideas and tips. And we'll add some things to the show notes. So that way, if anybody's listening and really wants to check them out, they can, they can go to that. Um, and then I'll just do other, as a reminder for our listeners, um, check the show notes for those resources. There's link to the podcast video, um, tech tip video, and then uh, the innovation squadcast PD and unified talent in our district for recertification hours. Um, and then don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your YouTube or Spotify um, or wherever you get podcasts uh, to get notifications of new episodes. We also want to hear from you for a new podcast podcast topics or if you want to be on the podcast so thanks for listening so much and mm -hmm. until next time yep thank you very much 
<laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>